So welcome to pre-cal. We are going to be talking about angle measurements and some basic things that we all take for granted. A lot of times we talk about angle measurements and that's really what you would think of as a degree measure. Um, there's more than one way to measure an angle. Uh, specifically, one is called a radian. So originally when you had a circle and you measured all of the degrees around that circle, that's a lot of degrees. That's 360. Imagine cutting a circle up into 360 pieces. Each of those little tiny pieces that you would cut up around the circle would be a really small part. That's a degree measure. The, originally, the, the back in history when they decided to do all of this kind of stuff, um, 360 was a really nice number to divide it up by lots of things, right? Lots of factors that go into 360 degrees. That's great, but when you get down to like, well, let me look at one degree measure. Let me get that division set up. Doing that by hand or by some kind of non-calculated method gets a little complicated, right? How big is a degree? Well, it's a really small thing. So there's something else called a radian measure. If you were to tell me the specific radius of a circle, like let's just say 282 centimeters. And I wanted to create an exact measurement every time, right? I wanted to talk about, well, how can I take that kind of thing and mark off measurements around a circle and be consistent about it every single time, no matter how big or small the circle is. Well, if I were to take that measurement and I were to make that same measurement around the edge of the circle like this, and make sure that they match up the radius of the circle and the distance you traveled in that arc, if they match exactly the same, then you are going to create a, an angle measurement at that central point, at the center of the circle, a central angle that is always consistent. And this is what we call a radian measure. In this example, if I look at that and I measure the angle at the center there, this is what we call one radian measure. It's where the, the arc length, the distance around the curved surface is equal to the radius. When you do those two things at the same time, you create a radian. By the way, a radian is approximately 57, 56, I think it's closer to 56 degrees, give or take a little bit. So that kind of fits together, which obviously if you've got a decimal value there, if I were to go all the way around the circle, I'm not gonna get a whole number of value. Well. This is actually, among all of these things, one of the things that comes out of all this is, is pi, right? Pi is a value that's related to the circumference as well as the radius, right? Speaking of those two things, if you were to take a degree measure all around the circle, you get 360 degrees, right? Let's suppose that we have a radius of one just to make the calculations really easy, okay? We end up getting these kinds of things, circumference, is two pi times the radius. The arc length, in other words, if you were to measure around the arc, how can I get the arc length from knowing the, the measurement, the angle measure that we have at the bottom and the radius, right? Um, so that tells me if I were to go all the way around the circle, that's essentially two pi r is the radius, right? So the radius is one, two pi times one equals two pi. So two pi radians is the same measurement as going full circle or 360 degrees. Something else to note, if that's true, then 180 degrees is equal to one pi. That's typically what we rem remember. That's your kind of your benchmark number. Pi radians, is equal to 300, or sorry, is equal to 180 degrees. I'd write that down. Also, if you don't know these two formulas, circumference and arc length, I would also write those down. Those are things, arc length is new, right? But the circumference, that's definitely old. Area of a circle, pi r squared, also old. Gonna be relevant, you're gonna need to know it. I'm probably not gonna reference it a lot. It's just kind of an expectation that you know these things. Let's talk about conversions. We want to talk about going from degrees because we're all really pretty familiar with what a degree is and how can I go back and forth between degrees and radians. Here's what we have. If you have an angle that's measured 90 degrees, then how many radians do you have, right? So another couple of examples would be like this. I want to convert 270, 30, and 24 into what we call a radian measure. I'm going to show you how to do number one. I'm going to show you how to do 90 degrees and convert that mathematically. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in, in the next clip. 
All right, we're going to talk about how to convert from degrees to radians and then radians to degrees. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write down the rule that we're going to use for a number of these things. And in this case, the first one is going to be the rule of going from degrees over to radians. You're just going to multiply by pi over 180. Take the degree, multiply by pi over 180, simplify that result, and you're going to end up with radians. You're probably going to have a pi in your answer, but it'll be radians. The other one uh, is going to be going back the other way. So let me move this, right? So we're going to go from radians to degrees, right? So we take the radian measure, multiply by pi, 180 over pi, that's going to equal your degree measure. One of the first things you're going to do, if there's a pi involved, that's going to cancel out. So that'll be nice to do as well. So you can see here, real quick, you're going to take it, you're going to multiply uh, 90 degrees times pi over 180, which is 90 pi over 180, but that reduces. And I can do this in my head. Um, this is not nothing complicated. These numbers are kind of nice. Pi over 2 is your answer. You could also give a decimal answer, but the most often answer is going to be in a fraction form. Now that you've seen me do it, I want you to take a minute and I want you to work through 270, 30 degrees, and 24 degrees. Complete those, answer the questions when they pop up, and then we'll keep going. All right, so we are going to talk a little bit about how to convert back and forth between these couple of things. Let me move the camera out of the way. Okay, here we go. To convert from radians, uh, or two, two radians from degrees, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. You can see that right here. So I'm going to take A, and I'm going to essentially multiply the degree measure times pi over 180. Now, if you take a second, just think about this. 270 times pi over 180. You can actually type that right into your calculator, and it's going to give you the exact measurement. So I really am not worried about trying that, but I'm going to want fractions of my answers, and this is not going to work in the calculator. But I notice that 9 goes into 27, or 90 goes into 273 times, and 90 goes into 182 times, right? So think about that. There's lots of um, ways you can simplify that using 3s, 6s, and 9s, and stuff like that. Here, you have 30 over 180. Obviously, you can mark those zeros off because 10 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 3 once and three goes into 18 six times, right? So you end up getting pi over six. Really, I'm just multiplying by this, but be really careful about this because if you don't uh, take careful caution to fix that, you're gonna have, if you try to your calculator, you're gonna get this crazy weird decimal answer and, and that's just not gonna be good enough. We want whole exact answers and that involves fractions, right? And so here, what you can see I'm working with 24 and 180. So I thought, well, you know what? 24 and 180, I know that um, that three goes into 24 eight times and three goes into 180 60 times, right? But eight over 60 is still not lowest terms and that's okay. I'm gonna take it another step. I know that eight and 60 both have a common factor of four. So I divided eight by four to get two and 60 divided by four is 15. And that is how I get it. You can use your calculator a little bit. If you'll leave the pi off and just do the fraction, uh, if your calculator does fractions, I'm going to tell you, be real careful. You need to know how to do this by hand because if you don't, you're going to have a problem. In the next part, it's kind of going backwards. If you've got an angle that measures 3 pi, then how many degrees, right? So we take the radian measure at the bottom, 3 pi times 180 over pi. That's the result that are what we always do. The pi's cancel out. It's always going to be happen first. 3 times 180 is 540. And that's all there is to going from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. I want you to try these for or the, the rest of these for, uh, for an example and get your answers before you move on, answer the question, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to do them. Okay, next part is how do I create a radian measure using the degrees okay and so you can see that over here we're taking the 125 or 1.25 pi and we're going to multiply by pi 180 over pi so if i'm going from a degree measure and you can see that um, this is the formula right here it's degrees times uh or 180 over pi whatever i have on the top i want to go to degrees i take the radian measure i'm going to multiply through it really, the pi's cancel out and 1.25 times 180. You can do this in your calculator. If it's a whole number value, you're gonna get a whole number value. In part B, I have five radians. 
this is not going to be a whole number. I don't have a pi involved, so I'm definitely going to have to multiply. So we're going to say 900 over pi. That could be an exact answer. Or if I wanted to go through and write out the decimal, I'm just going to do 900 divided by pi. I'm using the pi button, not 3.14. We have to be a little more exact. So end up with 286.48 degrees. Same thing again. The fraction, what probably a lot of you thought was the worst example. This is probably the easiest one. I can do a lot of simplification here uh, by hand and not have to worry about it. I know just the pi's cancel out almost instantly. I can do the four and 180 if I was divisible by four as well. If I didn't know that, I've got a calculator. I can check it out. Seven times 45, 315 degrees. Here again, I could have typed this directly into my calculator without doing any sort of simplification and I've gotten the right answer. Hope that helps. Okay, the next section, it's another conversion, right? So we have different ways of measuring degrees in, in, in different contexts, right? And one example is if I'm looking at navigation, right, across the, across the globe, like uh, if I'm flying a plane or if I'm dri driving a boat, then I have to have a way of locating myself across the planet, right? One of those ways is, we, is degrees, minutes, and seconds. On the picture here, you can see you, the state of Georgia, and you can see the, in, the grid laid out with whole degree measurements, right? So you have a, a 34, 33, 32, obviously, so you've got your angle measurements written out across an 85, 84, 83. That one thing, let's zoom in on one. You see here one square degree on the globe. Okay, our planet is broken up into degrees, right? With longitude and latitude. But if I were to tell you, oh, I'm in, you know, 35 uh, degrees to 34 degrees, if I'm in that one between 85 and 84, and right, if I told you a particular decimal value, and if I said I'm at 35 degrees, 85, in 35 degrees north, 85 degrees west, exactly, then boom, I, I know exactly where I am, right? However, if I'm in the mix, if I'm having to give you decimal values, that provides a huge amount of opportunity for space, right? One square degree is gigantic. So let's 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 put some specifics on this, right? Here, I've put a grid down, and this grid is a it's a square degree, but these have been broken up into 60 by 60. So you see that one tiny square there is worth 60. Uh, it's worth one minute, right? If you have degrees, then you have minutes, and then you have seconds. With one minute, or you have one degree is broken up into 60 by 60 uh, squares, which equals your minutes, right? That's a lot of minutes to find, right? So you can see that one entire city is possibly going to fit within a whole minute. I'm not going to zoom in, but if I want to go even farther, we can break this down into seconds, right? If I break that one square, say where Jasper is, you can see that dot is right on Jasper. If I broke that tiny, tiny box down into another 60 by 60 grid, then I also break it up into seconds, okay? And so this allows me to find locations very specifically. Right. So what we want to do now is we just want to convert back and forth between the two. It's just kind of give you an idea of what degrees, minutes, seconds was. Let's do the math behind it. This is actually fairly simple. I'm going to give you some conversions. A degree is equal to 60 minutes, which is equal to 60 seconds or 3,600 seconds. One minute is the same thing as 60 seconds. If you kind of can, if you think about time, a minute uh, and a second are the same. You can think about a degree as similar to the same placeholder as, as an hour, right? So the conversions work out the same. So I'm going to give you some examples and, and I'll work out the first one and then I'll let you do the others. So in this example, we're going to convert from degrees, minutes, and or degrees into degrees, minutes, and seconds. So take a minute, watch me do the first one, and then you do the next one. All right. So we're going to look at converting from degrees into degrees, minutes, and seconds. One of the th things we can do is right here, we're gonna take that decimal value, we're gonna multiply times 60. That's 60 uh, because it's 60 seconds, or 60 minutes in one degree. There is. So we end up getting half of that, which is 30. Answer the questions and then we'll move, we'll move on. 
Next, we're going to take our 120, so obviously 120 degrees. We're going to take the leftover part. We're going to multiply by times 60 again because that's going to be 60 minutes in my one degree, right? So a fourth of 60 is 15. These are nice whole number values. You end up getting up 120 degrees in 15 minutes. But sometimes, like this one, you get some uh, un unpleasant numbers, right? You take the whole number, set it aside, take that decimal, multiply by times 60. This is going to tell us the whole number value of how many uh, minutes are in one uh, or well, are in 0.6532 degrees, right? So we have 39.192 minutes, right? So I take the whole number, I throw it up there. I take the decimal again. We're going to multiply it by 60 again because there are 60 seconds in one minute, right? So if I have almost 20% of a minute left, how many seconds is that? We multiply times the number of seconds and we get 11.52. At this point, we're going to round up because uh, that we don't have anything smaller than than seconds. So this is the final step we're going to take. So we're going to round that up to 12 and we end up getting 96 degrees, 39 minutes and 12 seconds. And that's how you go from degrees into degrees, minutes and seconds. All right. Now, since we've done from degrees to degrees, minutes and seconds, well, what happens if we go backwards? This is actually less work. I'm going to go from degrees, minutes and seconds back to just degrees. This is a kind of a one step problem. Definitely calculator involved in all of this stuff. So don't think that this is a by hand thing. Okay, so if I have 12 degrees, 20 minutes and 30 seconds, I'm gonna show you how to convert this one and then I want you to do the other two, check your answers and then we'll come back. Okay, so we're gonna talk about how to do degrees, minutes and seconds back into just degrees. This is a really easy step. It's just one step really. The formula is up top, you can see it there. It's degrees plus the minutes over 60 plus the seconds over 3600. Every time, no matter what. So here we have a really easy way. 12 plus 20 over 60 plus the 30 over 3600. Solve that and you're done. All right? so we end up getting, the point here is you, you're only gonna have 12 point something. So don't ever get over 12, right? So we're gonna round that to two places, 12.34 degrees. If we keep going, we're going to look at uh, number 2, 94 plus 40 over 60, right? That's 2 thirds or 0.67, so 94.67 degrees. One more time with all three, 20, 321 plus 39 over 60 plus the 23 over the 3600. Be careful, it's this point right here. A lot of people want to make that get this wrong. They want to put 60 and 60 because you multiplied last time by 60 and 60. In this case, it's not the same case. It doesn't form that same pattern. We end up getting 321.66 degrees. Remember that when I give you a whole number value here, that whole number should still be the same, right? This is never going to add up to more than one. Otherwise, you'd have had it. You would have had another value added in that whole number value. Okay, that's how you do it. Hope you got those right. Let's move on. Thank you.